Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most fascinating manufacturing processes in the world. You've probably used a glass bottle thousands of times, whether it's for water, juice, soda, milk, or even medicine, but have you ever wondered how that bottle was made? Glass bottles may look simple, but the journey they go through is hot, complex, and incredible. In this video, we're taking you step by step through the fiery adventure that transforms simple sand into a perfectly shaped bottle sitting on a store shelf. So let's begin the journey from sand to shelf. Number one, what is glass really? Before we walk into the factory, let's quickly talk about what glass actually is. Many people know that glass is made from sand, but not everyone knows exactly how. Glass is mainly made from silica sand, soda ash, and limestone. These ingredients are melted together at extremely high temperatures until they turn into a liquid. But once that liquid cools, it becomes the hard, clear glass we use every day. So glass is basically melted and reshaped sand. Number two, step one, gathering and mixing the raw materials. Our journey begins in the batch house, the part of the factory where raw materials are carefully measured and mixed. The main ingredient is silica sand, a very pure type of sand that contains almost nothing but quartz. To help the sand melt more easily, factories add soda ash. And to make the glass stronger and more stable, they add limestone. Many modern factories also add recycled glass, called cullet, small amounts of chemicals to adjust the color or clarity, Recycled glass is extremely important. It melts faster than raw sand, saves energy, and reduces waste. Many glass bottles today contain a large percentage of recycled glass. Huge machines weigh each ingredient carefully, then drop them into giant mixers. The goal is to make a consistent blend so every bottle that comes out of the furnace meets the same quality standards. Number 3. Step 2. Melting the batch in the furnace. Next, the mixed batch is transported to the furnace of the plant, the hottest part of the entire plant. This furnace operates at temperatures of about 1500 degrees Celsius to 1700 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than a volcano. Inside the furnace, the raw materials melt into a thick, glowing orange liquid. Bubbles escape as the mixture becomes smooth. The molten glass flows continuously from one end to the other. Modern glass furnaces never stop running. They operate 24-7, sometimes for as long as 10 to 15 years before they are rebuilt. Stopping the furnace would cause the molten glass to harden and destroy the system. Workers use tiny windows made of special heat-resistant glass to look into the furnace. All you can see is a bright, fiery sea of liquid glass. It's beautiful, but extremely dangerous. Throughout this stage, sensors and computers monitor temperature, flow rate, color, purity, thickness. This ensures the molten glass is perfectly ready for forming. Number 4. Step 3. Conditioning. Cooling the glass to the right temperature. Before molten glass can be shaped into bottles, it needs to be cooled slightly and made more uniform. This happens in a long tunnel called the refining zone or conditioning chamber. Here, the glass cools from around 1600 degrees Celsius to about 1100 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the glass is still molten, but firm enough to be shaped. The key is to keep the glass at the perfect consistency, thick like honey, not too runny and not too stiff. Machines stir and mix the molten glass to remove any remaining bubbles. Smooth, bubble-free glass helps make stronger, clearer bottles. Number 5 cutting the molten glass into gobs. Once the molten glass is conditioned, it flows toward a machine that cuts it into small glowing chunks called gobs. A gob is a precise molten drop of glass that will become one single bottle. Gob feeders control the temperature, control the size and weight, cut the molten stream like scissors. Each gob is bright orange and looks like a giant droplet of honey, except it is over a thousand degrees Celsius and extremely dangerous. The exact weight of the gob determines the size of the bottle. Small gob for a small bottle, big gob for a large bottle. 
Robotic arms and shoots then quickly deliver the gobs to the next stage, the bottle forming machines. Number six, forming the bottle, the heart of the process. This is the most amazing part of the entire journey. The molten gobs arrive at machines called IS machines, individual section machines. These machines shape the bottles using two major steps. A. Step 1. The blank mold. The gob falls into a blank mold where compressed air pushes it into a shape called a parison. A parison is a rough, unfinished version of the bottle, kind of like a bottle embryo. In this stage, the neck is formed, the basic shape begins to appear, air pressure creates the hollow interior. The parison looks dull, thick, and small at this point. B. Step 2. The blow mold. Next, a mechanical arm transfers the parison into the final mold, also called the blow mold. Here, high-pressure air blows the parison outwards until it perfectly fills the mold shape. This final shape can be a soda bottle, a juice bottle, a beer bottle, a wine bottle, a perfume bottle, or a medicine bottle. The mold determines the design, curves, thickness, and details like brand logos or textures. Within a few seconds, the molten blob becomes a finished bottle, but it is still red-hot and extremely fragile. IS machines can make hundreds of bottles per minute. Everything is perfectly timed and synchronized. 7. Step 6. Annealing, strengthening the glass. After the bottle leaves the mold, it is still very hot and under internal stress. If it cooled too quickly, it could crack or explode later. So it must be cooled slowly and carefully in a long oven called an annealing layer. Inside this layer, bottles enter at around 600 degrees Celsius. They slowly move through the tunnel. They come out at room temperature. This controlled cooling removes stress and strengthens the glass. Without annealing, bottles would be far too weak to survive filling, transport, or use. Conveyor belts move the bottles through the layer in long lines. Watching this is like watching a river of glowing bottles slowly fade from bright orange to clear or green. Beat. Step 7. Inspection. Testing every bottle. Once the bottles are cool, they go through several layers of inspection. Modern glass plants use both machines and human workers to check for defects. Here's what inspectors look for. Cracks, bubbles, thin spots, scratches, bad shapes, improper necks, foreign objects, weak points. Advanced cameras scan each bottle at high speed. If a bottle doesn't meet the quality standards, it is automatically rejected and sent to be recycled. Some bottles are tested for strength by applying pressure or vacuum. Others are checked with light, sound, or laser measurements. Only bottles that pass every test will continue to packaging. 9. Step 8. Coating. Making the bottle smooth. Before packaging, bottles receive a thin outer coating of protective materials. This makes the bottle smoother, more scratch-resistant, less likely to crack, and easier to handle during transport. There are two main coatings, hot end coating applied right after forming and cold end coating applied before packaging. These coatings are invisible but important for durability. 10. Step 9. Packaging the bottles. Now the bottles are ready to be shipped. Packaging machines carefully stack and arrange them on pallets. Bottles may be placed in trays, wrapped in plastic film, packed into cardboard boxes or separated with dividers. The goal is to protect them during transportation. Glass is strong, but it still needs careful handling. Robots often do the heavy lifting here. They can arrange hundreds of bottles at a time with perfect precision. Once packaged, the bottles are labeled and stored in large warehouses until they are shipped to beverage manufacturers, pharmacies, or cosmetic companies. 11. Step 10. Shipping to a filling plant. After leaving the glass factory, bottles travel to filling plants. At these facilities, bottles are washed, bottles are sterilized, bottles are filled with the product, bottles are capped or sealed, bottles are labeled. Now they're ready for the store shelf and eventually your home. 12. The life cycle of a glass bottle. 
One of the best things about glass bottles is that they are 100% recyclable, not just once, but forever. A recycled glass bottle can become a new bottle, a glass jar, fiberglass, construction material, decorative glass items. Recycling saves energy because cullet melts faster than raw materials. Making a bottle from recycled glass uses less heat, less fuel, less time, and fewer raw materials. A single recycled bottle can save enough energy to power a computer for 25 minutes. 13. Why glass matters today. In a world full of plastic pollution, glass is becoming more popular again. Here's why. It's safe for food and drinks, it doesn't leach chemicals, it's reusable, it's infinitely recyclable, it's strong and attractive. More brands are switching back to glass packaging for health, environmental, and quality reasons. And as more recycling systems grow, glass bottles are becoming an important part of a cleaner future. 14. The amazing technology behind the scenes. Modern glass factories use advanced technology to stay efficient and safe. Robots handle the hottest tasks, sensors monitor temperature and pressure, computers control the molds, cameras detect tiny defects, automated lines keep production moving smoothly. A single glass furnace can produce millions of bottles every week and everything must be perfectly synchronized. Working in a glass factory requires precision, training, and careful safety procedures. The heat, speed, and machinery make it one of the most impressive manufacturing environments in the world. 15. Conclusion from sand to shelf. So there you have it, the complete fiery journey of a glass bottle. Raw materials are mixed, the batch melts in the furnace, molten glass is conditioned, glass is cut into gobs, gobs are formed into bottles, bottles are annealed, inspected carefully, coated, packaged, shipped to filling plants, delivered to stores, eventually recycled. It's an amazing process that combines ancient materials with modern technology, and every time you use a glass bottle, remember it started as simple sand that survived fire hotter than lava, shaping itself into a useful part of your life. If you enjoyed this journey, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment below with what process you want to see next. Thanks for watching.